Up until about 100 years ago, uh, the way that we repaired the body was pretty much just kind of, you know, pray. And this story really began to change around the turn of the last century, which corresponds so well with the way that we started to think about interchangeable parts on the assembly line. If you needed a new part, say a heart, you could either get one from a donor or make an artificial heart, but that paradigm was really still the same of viewing ourselves as a machine with spare parts. When tissue engineering came online, instead of thinking of the body as a sum of parts, we started to think of the body as a living ecosystem comprised of cells. And so we could say, okay, let's grow a new part for the human body using cells as the starting material. When people start learning about stem cells, they know that stem cells can turn into any part of the body. And we can use that knowledge to apply toward regenerative medicine. For example, that's what we do in the lab, like creating bone and cartilage in the lab. If you need human bone for cancer, congenital defects, trauma, the only way to get human bone is to cut it out of a human. And in practice, it's actually quite brutal. What we're proposing to do is a different paradigm. If you need a piece of human bone, you can use your own cells to grow your own. The way that we create EpiBone takes two things from the patient. First, we take a CT scan from the patient just to be able to map the defect in a correct way. And from this 3D image, we create this scaffold, which is taken from animal source. Using this four axis CNC milling machines, this bone block, once you take out, you wash away all the cellular materials and only left with the structure of bone, mineral and collagen protein. And then secondly, we take a fat sample from the patient to be able to isolate the stem cells out of that. The stem cells that we use are what's called multipotent. They're adult stem cells that don't have the ability to become any kind of cell in the body, but they can become bone and fat tissue quite readily. We put stem cells in this scaffolding material, the serialized bone ball. And put them in a system called a bioreactor, which is basically like a fancy fish tank. The whole field of tissue engineering really started after um, biomaterials started to be used in the body, when people realized that there was this whole interaction between cells and different kinds of materials. What do those cells mean? How do we best copy their natural environment in the lab? The first would be chemical factors. What are the nutrients a bone needs to be able to grow? The second class is some of these physical factors, like flow of nutrients, which deliver what's called shear stresses to the cells. We have to get both of those classes of signals right um, to get the bone to form properly. And in three weeks, the cells grow with the scaffold into a mature piece of bone that's ready for implantation. The furthest that we've gone with implantation in the largest animal has been um, initial studies that we've done in pig, and we're just finishing up these studies now. We still have to show, show a lot that this, this tissue engineer work, that this stem cells um, enhance regeneration. There's so much that we're really excited to see in the, in the coming time. I would love to see congenital defects be a statistic from the past. Every day I go to the lab, I learn more and try new things.